To other news, the confusing situation with the taxation of local staff employed by foreign diplomatic missions was commented on by Rainer Schlageter, the German ambassador to Kazakhstan. Only after several years did the state authorities become concerned with the issue of tax deductions for the diplomatic missions employees. I cannot comment on the domestic legislation of Kazakhstan, but I can tell you that my staff doesn't experience any inconveniences. I repeat again that I cannot comment on the domestic legislation. Meanwhile, just over $163,000 were received by the state treasury after the beginning of the tax inspection of diplomatic missions. Another 300000 is to arrive by the end of this year, assure the fiscals. The U.S. Foreign Service officers in Kazakhstan started to repay their tax debts. Out of 174 notified defaulters, 53 filed a declaration and 44 has already paid the money out. A USAID officer, Shulpan Mahmudova, says her organization has split into those who covered their debts and those who still have to do so. As regular citizens of this country, we knew that we should pay taxes before March 31st, so we always went to the tax office on time and submitted our tax declarations. But the new official notifications arrived here only this year. After a protracted silence, the Embassy of the United States has finally issued its comment. Apparently, according to the 1961 Vienna Convention, foreign diplomatic missions only cover their staff's social security payments, while the income taxes are filed by employees themselves. As a result, um, just as we in the United States feel an obligation to follow our law and pay our taxes, we expect everyone who works for us to do the same. The scandal broke out last December when Kazakh employees of foreign diplomatic missions began to receive notices of tax debts, followed by fines of several thousand dollars which were calculated for the period of five years. The responsibility to pay all income taxes lies solely on the citizens, while officials have no clear mechanism for monitoring of embassy's employees. It only became possible to calculate the approximate number of staff after a long correspondence with the foreign ministry and the country's pensions funds. We organized checkups during which we sent out requests to the pension funds and other authorized bodies. The obtained lists of employees allows us to calculate the exact number of people. The remaining defaulters will face new checks and additional fines. It is unlikely they will be exempt from paying taxes, as only the president has the authority to write off these debts. The conference Urban Kazakhs Mentality, Values and Purpose was held recently in Almaty, discussing the phenomenon of the so-called asphalt Kazakhs. The next report has more. The emergence of the phenomenon of the so-called asphalt Kazakhs is closely related to the influence of Russia. Experts of the Political Decisions Institute discussed a very sensitive for Kazakhstan issue of the difference between the Shal Kazakhs and tribesmen. The talks covered the increasing role of russified Kazakh population in the conditions of building a national state. According to some views, the situation can be improved only through the establishment of an alternative to Russian language and culture. The only alternative way in the current situation is to follow the West or the Turkic world and the democratization of a political system. The term Shala is used for calling Kazakhs who do not know their native language. However, the nature of the phenomenon is much deeper. Most radical movements often compare the Asphalt to the Mankurds, those oblivious to their kinship. However, there are no objective reasons for talking about russified Kazakhs' complete loss of cultural ties. And yet, recriminations are being heard more often recently. Writer and national patriot Magul Yolubai compares Shala Kazakhs with worms, eroding everything from within. These people play a negative role in the process of creating a national state. This is the fifth column working against the national society. They were prepared by the Soviet imperial ideology and they could destroy the national awareness. Nevertheless, there is no unambiguous answer to the most vexed questions of the national existence, admitted the organizers of the roundtable. According to them, labels and sweeping accusations are not important now. People simply have to discuss the issues from time to time. This will allow avoiding the national split and help finding a common language in the end. Almost 90,000 people with hearing disabilities and impairments live in Kazakhstan. About 25,000 of them are children. At the same time, there are only 24 special schools and just three kindergartens across the country. Find out more from the next report. 
The provision level for all Kazakh schools of deaf children is still quite low. The only exception is the first Almaty orphanage for deaf children. Once it became part of the state program 100 schools, 100 hospitals, it received sufficient funding to provide children and staff with necessary equipment and conditions. Unfortunately, even though more money is allocated in the budget for the needs of disabled people every year, the schools rarely see it. Our budget has remained just the same in comparison to the last year. According to statistics, 85% of children with hearing impairment in Kazakhstan do not have hearing aids. At the same time, boarding schools give them to students for free every four years. Studying in a boarding school allows me to open the world, which I cannot hear otherwise. The main problem today is not even to teach children to live in the world of the hearing, but to help them integrate into the society after the boarding school and later the colleges and museums. The problem is that after receiving a degree from a special education institution, they cannot find jobs as the entire services system is now in private hands. The Kazakhstan Society of Deaf People has the total of 18 educational and industrial enterprises, which accommodate only half of all people with hearing disabilities. Thousands of deaf people are still unemployed and unable to compete in the labor market. Employers simply do not want to hire them, preferring people without impairments. Gulbakit Imanbaeva has a disability and is a mother of three. Together with her children, she has to live in a dormitory, working in the sewing shop of the training and production enterprise belonging to the Kazakh Society of Deaf People. It is very difficult for people with disabilities to find a job. I applied several times to various places, but was always turned down. The main issue today is not even to help deaf people to adapt to the world of the hearing, but to empower them to break through the barriers raised by the state authorities, which could actually help these people to integrate into society. These were all latest updates from Kazakhstan. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye.